Welcome back to Final Drive and this video is a little bit more of a grab and shoot kind of video. I haven't scripted it or anything like that because I was just doing a service on that thing. Just oils, filters, fuel filter, that sort of thing. So that's all done because it's going out next weekend, which you'll see in an upcoming video. But I found this little box with the, with the um, service kit that I bought a little while ago and it's an EGR delete. It got me thinking, how much difference does it actually make when you delete your EGR? So I'm going to plug the Nanocom in go for a drive, remove the EGR and do it again. Might be interesting, you never know. Okay, so like I said, this was a bit sort of like smash and grab this video. This is a lead for the Nanocom because the Nanocom's up there because it's the only place I could film it with the GoPro, which is here. Currently, driving around town, it's the EGR itself isn't actually doing anything. I hate stopping for newer Land Rovers. Go on, it's only a roundabout. You should have the clearance for it, it's only painted on. A bit like your off-road credentials, really. Oh, anyway, moving forward. We're up to temperature now. The coolant temp is 83 degrees, so we're pretty good. It's saying it's happy. Uh, air inlet temp, 32 degrees. The idea is an EGR opens up when you're cruising on a constant throttle to reduce your exhaust gas emissions. I might back off and floor it and see if it decides it wants to open when we're on full throttle and everybody's got them wrong. Ready, steady, go. That's flat out. Nope. Nothing. So I've just pulled over and had a quick look and it appears to all be in order. It's plugged in at the top. It's plugged into the actuator. The actuator itself seems to work. It's all plugged in. They all they all go down, and they seem to they seem to want to do go on to like their switches and stuff down there. Also, another quick point of note. Um, I've literally spent this afternoon doing a service on this thing, as I mentioned at the start of the video. I've done the oil oil filters and fuel filter and air filter and all the rest of it. And I'm not sure when it was last done because obviously it left my hands for a couple of years and then came back to me. So I had to assume it hadn't been done in that time. And she is purring like a kitten now, which usually means it's about to go bang, but I'll take it for the minute because it is driving really nicely. Right, so have a little look. Now I will admit I've not taken one of these out before and I've not really watched any videos of anybody taking them out so you're going to learn with me. This is really hot I should have done this before taking it for a drive especially as it achieved not a lot. it from there I think. Alan! In case you were wondering by the way, these little bolts that hold the EGR to the manifold they are 8 mils and this little EGR cooler that I'm about to undo is a 5 mil Allen key. Okay, so now is the moment of truth. Will it just lift out? Yep. It's not really going to achieve anything, is it, replacing that? There was a bit of carbon on the back of that. It must have done something because there's a, there's a fair bit of soot in there, so at some point in its life it did work. Just not anymore. Okay, so in the kit came this little dude. I'm hoping there's a gasket with him. Doesn't have to be, I suppose. This is only for the exhaust. Um, 
It's only for the cooler anyway. So. This bit does want to be sealed because if it's not, you'll have a boost leak effectively from the turbo. So it's about a bite there. Have you seen my hands? Here we go. Nice. Where's my bolts? I've got new bolts. Can't pass up the opportunity to use new bolts. So not how you open that. Look at this. Yo. In you get. Okay, so that's that done. Um, let's start it up just to see if anything happens. New fuel, new fuel filter. What are you in? Let's have a look. No warning lights. That's throwing a bit of a fit. There we go, we'll come back to that. Um, seems all right to me. I guess we'll just take it for a drive, see what it does. So apparently deleting your EGR valves make them a load quicker. I'm on the fence about that, but it's better to be safe than sorry, I suppose, isn't it? In fact, I'm so on the fence, I bought myself a coffee along and I don't even have a cup holder because they're broken off. So uh, if it's that much quicker, I will eat my hat now this could be placebo effect i'm not having it but i've just pulled away literally I'm still in my road where i live and it's spooled up quicker and then i put my foot down in it like yeah i'm not sure that could be placebo effect i've had to turn my phone around because it fell over it's that bloody fast but yeah i'm not sure not sure that could be placebo effect it could just or because it's like warm and normally when i drive away from my home it's still cold so it's a bit of a whip stop rattling it's a bit of a weird sensation driving away from your house in a vehicle that's already warm but yeah i'm not sure but initial initial impressions is it spools up a bit quicker and is a little bit faster you won't bloody believe this. So, just as I was parked up having a look at these EGR settings on this Nanocom, I found a new page. It's got EGR inlet percentage, and it only bloody works. Obviously, I've now removed the EGR. I have checked back on the old pages, and it still says zero. But, yeah, if I, interestingly, if I put my foot down, it goes to 40% EGR inlet opening. But yeah, the EGR was working. It was freed up by the looks of it. Um, so me having that placebo effect going, it does feel a little bit quicker, may actually be true because obviously what it does, it shuts the air intake and opens the exhaust valve effectively into the EGR, I now know. So it's getting a load more air out the back of the turbo or letting a load more air out the back of the turbo spooling it up a bit quicker so it could be more responsive could actually need me crash helmet after all i'm going to i'm going to drive a bit further and then make a decision i'll hold the gopro still so you can see what i mean it's got a constant 40 percent only seems to open 40 percent but then so does the wastegate so I need to do a few more miles really to decide whether it is actually making a difference or not. The placebo effect now is really real because it's now telling me it's working as well as me thinking I can feel it working. This is a much cooler screen to look at with these green numbers and stuff like that. It's much better than the other one. 
makes me want to keep it up there even more. I might have to get an extension lead for me old um, SCART port, <laughs> OBD2 port, so I can run the, down the A-pillar and stuff like that, because an OBD to OBD extension lead might be a lot. So yeah, I might actually leave that permanently mounted up there. It's very cool. And I can see my position on my EGR that's in the garage. <laughs> So in conclusion, yes it is worth doing. It's about 40 quid to buy the kit from JGS and it takes about 10 minutes to fit it. If you, take, if you drive the truck beforehand, you'll burn your hands, but that's up to you if you want to be a fool or not. But, you know, alongside obviously keeping the air intake cleaner, keeping your oil cleaner and keeping everything else cleaner, it does actually make your truck a little bit quicker. As far as the MOT goes, not really sure. We'll pro cross that bridge in another year's time, but I would do it, it's well worth it. And if you want any more advice, check out this playlist and see what other videos I've been up to. I can yank it. Actually, I'm going to blank the EGR cooler off. Never mind, ignore that. But we can but try, otherwise it'd be a pretty rubbish video. Don't worry, the next video will be going off-road, so that'd be much more interesting. This one's going to be a complete waste of time by the look of it. Uh, uh. Done.